Hello everybody, welcome back to The Wet Lab. This is the place that we work on things that are wet. AKA pretty much everything that is uh, stored in ethanol. You wanna see what's going on today? Let's check it out. This over here is a, a jar of rats preserved in ethanol. Very nice. Over here we have a new one. It's a bigger jar full of screaming fish. Oh my gosh, wonderful. And over here, I was just working on a, a couple puffer fish here in this jar. Bing, bing. Check this out, you wanna see it? They're kinda cool. Close? Look at that face, my guy. Ah. Okay, here's the deal. So when a boy puffer fish wants to attract a female puffer fish, Fish, you know, he's kind of feeling like it's that time. They'll do something very interesting. They'll go in the sand and they'll make a bunch of different patterns in the sand that look very ornate and super fancy. It looks something like this. So then the female comes by, she sees the little, little art like sculpture thing that it makes in the sand and she's all like, damn boy, we got a little artist here. We got a little, we got a, you're creative. Mm. I like that. Bing, bang, boom, they kiss and fall in love forever. That's how puffer fish uh, court, you know? So here's the deal. That's what we're gonna be talking about today. Mating rituals. Oh! Yo, dude, something is wrong with that puffer fish. Ugh, it smells so dang. Uh, uh, a tier list. You guys, you guys know what these are? So a tier list is like an online list uh, that people use to, to rank things. You can see there are a bunch of levels, right? Oh, shoot. <laughs> Today we're gonna do the mammal mating ritual tier list. Let's freaking go, boys. So in this tier list, we're ranking the different ways that either some mammals woo or court other individuals in their same species, or simply just let other individuals in their species know that they're ready to get it on. The best mating rituals are gonna be up here at the top in the S tier, and the worst mating rituals are gonna be on the bottom in the F tier. As usual, I hit a Where's Waldo figure somewhere in this video, so let me know if you could find it. Now that we got this tier list rolling, you can probably tell where we are. To start this bad boy, we are in... The Dry Y'all know the deal. The Dry Collection is the place where we hold everything dry. <laughs> and now the first entry on our tier list of mammal mating rituals. It's... Echidnas. Oh my goodness. Whenever you're like, what's the prickliest animal? Everyone goes quick to porcupine, but no, my guy, you're forgetting about the echidna. I'm gonna go really close to show you guys. Their quills or spines are pretty much like porcupine spines. They're modified hairs, except they're much, much thicker. Thicker. They're like as thick as a twig. Before we get too hopped up on the echidna train, uh, you must know that the males mate with hibernating females while they're hibernating. From a human perspective, which is the perspective that we're gonna be ranking things on this tier list, that is not cool, that's weird, in a bad way. So uh, non-consensual hibernation mating is an F tier mating ritual right there. Only the slightest step above echidnas, but probably still an F tier are. Hedgehogs. Hedgehogs look very similar to echidnas, but if you look closely, their their quills or spines are a little bit more fine, kind of like a very rough comb rather than uh, twig-like. But y'all ever hear how they mate? Hmm. When the male hedgehog comes upon a female hedgehog, they'll kind of circle around it, and the female will just kind of remain stationary. And it'll just keep circling and circling and circling, so much so that they'll leave these kind of like divots in the grass, these kind of imprints that look like bullseyes. That's just from the female in the center and the male just kind of racing around it again and again and again. And then when the female is just kind of ready to mate, then they'll mate. Some people look at this and they're like, oh my gosh, it's a dance, they say. They say the hedgehog is dancing. I say, wait, 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 let's think about this though, my friends. Instead of a smooth cha-cha, hey, how are you? You like this? To me, it seems a little bit more kind of like aggressive. Are you ready? Are you ready now? Are you ready now? It's creepy. For that reason, we're gonna put the hedgehogs again in F tier alongside antelope. When a male antelope wants to mate with a female antelope, it will emit a warning call. Warning that a predator, such as a lion, is nearby. A lion is near! Straight up, they trick female antelope to thinking that there's a predator around the area so that they stay close by, giving them, theoretically, more opportunities to mate with them. So corkscrewy and so pretty. Tricking animals to mating with you is uh, not cool, so we're gonna put antelope in F tier. Enough! with the non-consensual stuff, right? Enough! Let's move a tier up into tier D and start talking about the, the more fun or interesting ones. Beginning with Mus Musculus, AKA the house mouse. Teeny tiny. <clears throat> All right, so here's what that mouse do. Okay, this sounds very strange, but um, mice sing to each other. So you have a male mouse trying to look for a female mouse. It will emit extremely 
high pitch, very complicated sounds in like a long continuous fashion. Which is basically singing. And if a female mouse hears that, that, that sound, it will show up and uh, start singing back. A chase will commence. The male is, is chasing after the female singing. And then the female is like playfully running away like. They're kind of just engaging in this playful game of chase while uh, singing back and forth in like a flirtatious manner to each other. Welcome to the D tier of mating rituals. And if you thought that was cute, let me show you something cuter. Prairie voles. So prairie voles are uh, one, monogamous, and two, mating pairs are often found uh, cuddling together. Yeah. While they're cuddling together, they'll, do, they'll engage in something called synchronous breathing, where the, their breathing will literally match. <gasps> It's cute, right? It's cute. If another prairie vole were to kind of like just show up, one of the partners would just kind of chase it away so that they could be alone and just together. Unless the prairie voles were intoxicated. Follow me on this one, right? This was kind of crazy. There was a scientist who wanted to know what would happen to the pair bond of prairie voles if um, you introduce alcohol into the equation. So literally they take a, took a pair of prairie voles that were bonded and then uh, separated the male and female and then made the male uh, drunk. They just kind of gave it alcohol. Then they introduced an additional female into the equation and, um, and observed whether the, the male decided to cuddle with its pair bonded partner or the, the new female. When they weren't drunk, they almost always decided to uh, cuddle with their pair bonded mate. But when they were drunk, there was a drastic increase of frequency in uh, cuddling with the new female. So prairie vole males are like great mates unless they're intoxicated, which is why we're gonna put prairie voles in the D tier. They love to cuddle, but when they get a little tipsy, look out, they might be cuddling with somebody else. So I don't know if you could tell, but the astute observer might have noticed that, that there are two different types of rooms in the dry collection. This is one room right here, and there's another in here. This is because there are two different types of cabinets in the dry collection. The first room has cabinets that hold skins, which are, um, I don't know, as you would guess, the skins of animals. Ta-da, look at all those squirrels. You, you looking good, you looking fresh, my guy. In these cabinets, you have the stuffed skins of the animals, all in that, that Superman position and often you have exclusively the skulls that are associated with those skins. That's this room. This, is, this room has animal skins and some skulls associated with them. The other room holds skeletal material, so just the bones, no skins here. All different sorts of bones, but most commonly the skulls, like this one, which is the next animal on our list. The hooded seal. So hooded seals have inflatable nasal passages. Basically, they can like blow up their left nostril, just their left nostril, and it looks like a giant pink balloon. It looks like this, which is insane. And then they kind of like flap it all around to make this weird noise. And the lady hooded seals can't resist it, man. There's something about that pink nostril that really just, yo, let's freaking go. Very similar to this, and also in the D tier is, yo. Camel. When male Bactrian camel are ready to get it on, this thing comes out of their mouth called like a doula. It just looks like a swollen tongue or if you ask me, it kind of looks like a scrotum. Just to signal that they're ready to rock. It's kind of like the hooded seal thing, except it looks like a scrotum and it's in their mouth and it kind of froths at times. Yuck. That's gross. That rounds up the D tier, but now we're gonna get into the juicy examples. And by juicy examples, I mean mating rituals that involve... <laughs> Quick skull identification speed run. What do you think this is right here? Okay, it's not a fish. There's not enough bones in the skull. Looks like we have one strong bone for the jaw, so it's a mammal. We have a big canine too, so maybe it's in carnivora. Very rounded front, right? It's not very long snout, so it's not a dog-like animal. It's probably in Felidae. Skipping to the end, this is a bobcat. Did you get it right? Female bobcats will pee all over the place to one, mark their territory, and two, signal to a male that they're ready to go, that they're in heat, that they're ready to rock. You might be surprised to find that Dirty! 
is commonly used to signal that, that you're ready to mate or you're like fertile and ready to go. We're putting bobcats in C and it's only gonna get better from here. Okay, my friends, what's better than um, peeing on like a tree or something like that? Naturally, uh, peeing on yourself. Like male goats, a male goat will often pee on itself to attract a female uh, to mate. We're gonna put goats in the B tier. They'll even go so far as to like pee inside their mouths and then use their mouths to kind of like spit it all over the rest of their body, you know, just to make sure that they cover every inch of themselves in their own pee. There is a term to describe this, which is kind of awesome. It's self and urination, which if you can believe is not my favorite science word we're gonna cover in this video, that's gonna happen later. But what's better than peeing on yourself? Peeing on somebody else. Just like porcupines. When a male porcupine wants to signal to a female porcupine that it would like to mate, um, it will just kind of blast them with a bunch of pee. They're even known to like climb onto high branches and just kind of like rain rain down on them. Peeing on your potential mate lands porcupines in the B tier. But what could possibly be better than getting peed on? Drinking someone else's pee. As is the case with this bad boy right here. This is this is a giraffe. Real quick, if you look in the back right here, you can see the skull is kind of chopped off. That's because if we look at the tag, that this is a zoo specimen right here. It's from the Detroit Zoo. When animals pass away at zoos, they often donate them to museums so that they can be kind of studied. It's a little bit more humane than going out and like, I don't know, collecting a giraffe from the wild, which is, is not a good thing to do. Except the thing is that the zoos perform a necroscopy on all of the, the animals, so they they slice into their skull, they kind of like scramble their brain up and they do a bunch of, I don't know, science on the brain to see, I don't know, what happened to the brain while they were in captivity. The zoo specimens always come out so clean because they're processed really nicely, but they all they all have these like sliced up heads. Okay, but let's talk about giraffes drinking each other's pee. In order to see if a female giraffe is like uh, ready to go, a male giraffe will drink the female's pee. Giraffes even have like an organ inside the mouths, on the roof of their mouths, that can sense the level of hormones in another giraffe's urine. We're gonna slap that giraffe in the A tier for that pee drinking behavior. Now, I'm sure you're like, Charlie, Charlie, we're in A tier. How do you get better? How do you get better than drinking some another animal's pee? To that, I say, my friend, my friend, the answer is so clear. It has been in front of you this this whole time. Just think about it. What could possibly be better than a mating ritual that involves pee? The answer is clear. A mating ritual that involves who? When one hippo likes another hippo. Male hippo shows up looking all strong, looking all hippo-y. I'm ready to mate. Female hippo sees the male hippo is like, oh, yes, you're my kind of guy. You're my kind of girl. I want to mate with you. And to show you that I want to mate with you, here's what I'm going to do. She turns around. She lowers her head. She raises that booty and pow, poops everywhere. The whole time she's wagging around her little hippo tail so that it goes around in like a spray. It's explosive. It's exciting. And there's a name for this portion of this unusual mating ritual, which of course is the greatest science vocabulary word in this entire video. This act is referred to as submissive defecation. Anyways, guys, that's S tier. Did I miss anything? Do you disagree with my tears? Let me know in the comment section. Thanks so much for watching. Bye. Say goodbye. Bye.